Hi, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'll try to make this not too long, although we are the most interesting talk here. Uh, no offense to anyone who's preceded or followed me. So before founding Modern Meadow, our scientific team invented the bioprinting of human tissue. So that is a specialized 3D printer and techniques to print cell aggregates that are living cells that will grow and form uh, tissues like liver, uh, blood vessels, kidneys, eventually entire organs. And to commercialize this technology, they co-founded a company called Organovo, which is now a publicly listed New York Stock Exchange traded company worth about a uh, billion dollars last time I checked. And Organovo is pursuing the medical regenerative medicine applications of uh, tissue engineering and particularly 3D bioprinting. But beyond medicine, there are enormous, there's enormous potential in tissue engineering to make tissues for consumer applications. And this is the founding premise behind Modern Meadow. We're taking biotech beyond medicine. So imagine if you could grow some of the products that we use by the millions and billions of pounds every year. And if you could, if you could grow those tissues, uh, tissues like leather and meat, uh, without harming animals or the environment, if you could make these products not only as good as the natural thing, but potentially even better. And the reason we need to do this is because the current way that we produce animal products in factory farms is entirely unsustainable. So across the world, there's seven billion people, and to feed those seven billion people, we maintain a global herd of 60 billion land animals. Unfortunately, if you look at United Nations projections, the uh, world population is ballooning over the next 35 years to 10 billion people. We're gonna need to nearly double our animal herds to 100 billion land animals to feed uh, these people to provide dairy, meat, uh, leather, eggs, and other animal products. Unfortunately, there's not room on the planet to double these numbers. We're already hitting planetary limits. Uh, current livestock production already takes up a third of all the ice-free land on the planet, 8% of global freshwater, and is one of the leading contributors in the world, if not the leading contributor to uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, there's a United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization um, estimate that puts livestock contributions to global warming at 18%. The World Bank puts that number at 51%. Either way you look at it, there's not room to double uh, that amount of greenhouse gas emissions. In addition, you have a, a, a number of issues around food security, disease risk, uh, chemicals, antibiotics, pesticide use, animal welfare. Uh, but where there's a huge problem, there's also a huge opportunity. So animal products are an enormous global market. Um, we consume 300 million tons of meat a year. That's fast becoming a trillion dollar per year global market that hasn't really seen much innovation in the last uh, 5,000 years. Uh, globally, we consume uh, about $63 billion worth of leather goods. So at Modern Meadow, we're building a new biofabrication industry. Uh, we're the first company that's doing tissue engineering for consumer purposes. We sort of see ourselves at the intersection of material science, uh, of food technology, and of agricultural science. Uh, we're commercializing leather first. Meat is sort of a longer term, um, a longer term target. Now, longer term is still not science fiction. It's not that far away, but we see meat being commercialized in about 10 years. There's a few reasons for that. Um, consumer acceptance, FDA approval. Leather does not face these hurdles, so leather is our uh, more near-term target. And the industry has already been asking for something like, uh, like what we're doing, something like biofabricated leather. leather. This is uh, Johann Zeitz. He's the chairman of PPR, which is uh, now called Caring Group and is one of the biggest luxury holding companies in the world. Uh, this is him basically wishing there were a better way to make leather. Um, and advances in biofabrication are making this a reality. So let me quickly explain how we go about growing cultured leather. Uh, first, we source cells. We take a very small biopsy from an animal. This could be a cow, this could be a pig, it could be something more exotic, an ostrich, a crocodile, panda, uh, go wild. Because we don't hurt the animal, we take a small uh, sample of tissue. We then isolate the cells of interest. If you want to make leather, you isolate skin cells. If you want to grow uh, muscle, you isolate. If you want to grow meat, you isolate muscle cells. Uh, for leather, we then grow sheets of tissue. Uh, we coax those sheets to form collagen, which is the structural main component of leather that gives it its uh, typical elasticity and strength. 
We then layer those sheets so we can um, completely control the thinness or thickness and other properties of the leather. We then allow those sheets to fuse together while the tissue is still living to um, ensure strength and stability. We then take the leather through a much shorter and less chemically intensive tanning process, which is much uh, more environmentally friendly. Uh, the leather is then finished and ready to make into um, leather products. Cultured meat employs a very similar process. Uh, we isolate and grow the cells we want. Again, these can be from any animal. The animal is not harmed. The cells are then multiplied uh, many, many, many times outside the animal. So a very small sample of cells from a cow could potentially yield millions of hamburgers. So it's a very efficient process. We then assemble uh, the muscle cells into muscle units, so larger tissue components. Uh, these are then uh, can be flavored, vitamins can be added. This can be um, much healthier than um, traditionally slaughtered meat. Uh, and then it's ready to cook and eat. And we've actually already done this. So we did this uh, two years ago in 2011 at TEDMED. There's a great video online. I highly encourage you to go watch it. It's uh, rather entertaining. Um, this is Gabor Forgox, who's our uh, chief scientific officer. Uh, he um, fried up a little pork chop um, and ate it on stage in front of a live audience, and I'm happy to say he's doing just fine. Uh, and this is our CEO, Andras, uh, on the sort of bottom picture there, who this summer at TED Global unveiled uh, leather, our leather product. And we're working with some of the best artisans in the world, including a 20-year veteran of Hermes, um, who is field testing our leather to make sure it meets the highest standards in the world. And uh, just very quickly, I'm delighted to show you the world's first biofabricated leather. Terrible sound when I put down your mic. So this is the world's first biofabricated leather. This was grown in a lab not slaughtered from an animal. It is real, biological, genuine leather. It's the same cells and the same tissue that um, you would have uh, seen had you killed a cow, except no cow was harmed. Now the beauty of this is we can control all the properties. As you can see, this leather is very, very thin. Uh, we could potentially make it any thinness, any thickness. We can increase the amount of collagen. We can uh, dial up and control the properties in a way that's entirely not possible with traditional leather today. Traditional leather, um, means manufacturers are incredibly limited by the shape of an animal hide, the variability in the hide. They have to cut around insect bites, scratches. This is a huge headache. As much as 50% of material is lost, and you're completely limited by what grew on the animal. Uh, we free manufacturing from all of those constraints. And as you can see, we can do things that no leather uh, on the world today can do. This is translucent leather. It's drapes almost like silk, and it's uh, pretty much see-through. Uh, but this is real biological leather, and we're getting tremendous, tremendous interest from uh, brands and fashion designers who basically flip uh, head over heels for this. Their, um, their minds are just blown when they see this. So just very quickly, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So in addition to, to all the engineering benefits you get, um, the resource benefits are tremendous. So our process uses 99% less land, 96% less water, 96% fewer greenhouse gas emissions, and about half as much energy. Thank you. OK, we'll take two questions from Modern Meadow. So we'll let's go here first, and then we'll go to you in the back. First of all, congratulations. I think it's uh, amazing. Um, a, qu a quick question on nutrients. I, I don't see that on the list. You, for, for meat, for instance, you, you will still need amino acids, uh, uh, fatty acids, uh, vitamins and stuff. And there was a presentation by a Dutch professor a couple of months ago in London. Um, what is your relationship to them? And how, f on a technical level, how far more advanced are you versus them? Very, very good questions. Uh, so, so the Dutch researcher this summer that unveiled the hamburger is, is Mark Post. Uh, he's, uh, we're very happy that he did that. It's basically free publicity for this entire industry. He's, he's an academic researcher, and the methods he used are entirely not scalable, which is why that burger cost a third of a million dollars. Uh, he doesn't have any scalable methods. Um, we do. 
And so we are also the only private company, and we also have issued patents on meat. So we're very happy that he's there helping out to validate the space, but we don't see him as a competitor. We see him as a potential collaborator. Um, and then for, for the, the media question, very good question also, we're uh, defining our own serum-free media. So it's free of animal products, free of animal serum. Have you? Um, I'm sorry? So, so we're, we're mixing our, our own media. We're defining our own media. So that, that includes basic ingredients that you can buy from suppliers. But the actual um, formulation is something that, that we're, we've developed in-house. Have you <clears throat> uh, actually had uh, consumer products? Uh, I'm invested in a company making shoes uh, right now, and leather is a, an enormous component, and the minimums you have to buy and so on, and it's very complicated. Have you started actually supplying uh, material uh, for you know, handbags or specifically my interest would be in women's shoes? Great question. So we are looking at every product category, and we started to talk to um, – Luxury brands, automotive, aviation, there's a tremendous amount of industries that use leather. Currently, we're not selling to anybody. Um, th this is deliberate, we're an R&D company. What we're doing is, is sort of talking to those brands, working within our, our laboratory to fine tune the materials, to make them perfect, to make them the best they can be. And then we're moving them into pilot production uh, starting next year and commercial production in a couple years. Great, so I'm gonna wrap the questions. Let's thank Sarah again thank you. for a great presentation.